This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at the octet rule. The octet rule states that atoms bond together in order to achieve a full valence shell, containing 8 electrons. And by doing so, they achieve the same electron configuration as a noble gas. Here we can see the symbols of the first four noble gases. They are helium, neon, argon and krypton. If we look at the electron configurations, we can see that each noble gas has a full valence shell. For helium, that's the two electrons in the 1s sublevel. For neon, that's the two electrons in the 2s sublevel and the six electrons in the 2p sublevel. For argon, that's the two electrons in the 3s sublevel and the six electrons in the 3p sublevel. And for krypton, it's the two electrons in the 4s sublevel and the six electrons in the 4p sublevel. So as we can see, all noble gases, with the exception of helium, have eight electrons in their valence shells. An important point to note is that noble gases are stable in that they don't form compounds because they have full valence shells. So next, we'll have an introduction to two types of bonding. Atoms can gain a full valence shell by either sharing electrons, which is covalent bonding, or by transferring electrons, which is ionic bonding. On the left we have the Lewis structure of CH4 which is methane. The atoms in methane are held together by covalent bonds. On the right we have an example of ionic bonding. Ionic bonding occurs between oppositely charged ions. So next we look at each type of bonding in a bit more detail. So we'll start by looking at covalent bonding which is sharing of electrons. Here we can see two Lewis structures. We have bromine on the left and molecular oxygen on the right. A molecule of bromine consists of two bromine atoms bonded by a single covalent bond. A single covalent bond is composed of two electrons. Each bromine atom has seven valence electrons. So by sharing these two electrons, each bromine atom can achieve a full valence shell. Next we look at our second example which is O2. An oxygen atom has six electrons in its valence shell. A double covalent bond is composed of four electrons. So by sharing these four electrons, each oxygen atom can achieve a full valence shell. So to summarize, in covalent bonding, atoms share electrons to achieve a full valence shell. Next, we look at ionic bonding, which is the transfer of electrons. On the left we have a sodium ion, and on the right we have a chloride ion. During the formation of an ionic bond, a sodium atom transfers an electron to a chlorine atom. This results in the formation of a sodium ion and a chloride ion. The sodium ion now has a full valence shell, and as we can see it has the same electron configuration as the noble gas neon. The chloride ion has also achieved a full valence shell, and now has the same electron configuration as the noble gas argon. So to summarize, ionic bonding results in the formation of ions. Each ion has a full valence shell and the same electron configuration as a noble gas. So we'll end the video by looking at the exceptions to the octet rule. The first two are hydrogen and helium. Both atoms are in period one of the periodic table. Therefore, they can only hold two electrons in their valence shells. So when hydrogen forms a bond with another atom, it can only hold two electrons in its valence shell. Helium, being a noble gas, does not form compounds. It exists as a monoatomic element with two electrons in its valence shell. Next, we have BF3, which is boron trifluoride. If we look at the Lewis structure, we can see that the boron atom only has six electrons in its valence shell. Boron is an exception to the octet rule, in that it is stable with less than eight electrons in its valence shell. The same is true for BeCl2, which is beryllium chloride. If we look at the Lewis structure, we can see that the beryllium atom only has four electrons in its valence shell. Once again, this is an exception to the octet rule. Our last example is SF6, which is sulfur hexafluoride. If we look at the Lewis structure, we can see that the sulfur atom has 12 electrons in its valence shell, which is known as an expanded octet. This is often seen when non-metal elements in period 3 onwards form compounds. So next we'll have a summary of the exceptions. They are hydrogen, helium, beryllium, boron and period 3 elements such as sulfur and phosphorus. Both hydrogen and helium are stable with two electrons in their valence shells. 
Beryllium and boron are stable with 4 and 6 electrons in their valence shells respectively. And finally we have period 3 elements such as sulphur and phosphorus. These can have more than 8 electrons in their valence shells, which is known as an expanded octet.